All right, so here we are at the fly tying table on the Vice. So this is the Ron Abbey signature series, but I think uh, it might not even be available anymore. So what I find uh, comparable right now is the Dynakeen Barracuda Deluxe or the Dynakeen Trekker Rotary Vice. So some of the basic tools for fly tying or that we'll need here for this is gonna be a bobbin. This is a right bobbin. It kind of has these uh, tension knobs right here. I have a quality pair of Dr. Slick scissors. These are a carbide model. The last tool that I'm gonna use for this setup is gonna be the whip finisher. All right, so let's begin with some of the basics. I'm gonna start with the parts of the hook because these are gonna come into play in how and, and like how long and all of that that we tie our materials. So first, right here, we have the hook eye. This is the shank, the straight part. Then we have the bend of the hook and of course the point. So first thing we do, we're gonna take this thread. What's facing me, I come from over the top, behind the back, and wrap back towards the bend of that hook. You can see my hook's kind of moving a little, so I'm gonna open this up, tighten that down so that it clamps, and I can take my finger and go like this and it doesn't move. That's, now we know we're locked in. Hold this out at like a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna wrap towards the back. And the reason I'm holding this out is that it, it lays down that, that wrap nice and straight. Right? I want to keep everything really uniform, really nice and straight. Wrapping this back is kind of like a knot in itself, so it's what secures all this to that shank. Then I'm going to go back pretty much all the way. I'll grab this one that I just tied with the hinkle, and we'll kind of dissect what's going on here. So here off the back, I have the flash. This stuff is called flashaboo. Flashaboo has its benefits because when you have it off the back like this, like how I tied on here, it kind of dances in the water. You can almost see how it's very, it's very easy to move even here. And when you have that hanging off the back of the material, it really like keeps dancing. Now one of the, the drawbacks of it is that you usually don't find it in too many colors. It's kind of either gold or silver. Another type of flash I like to use is the polar flash. You know, there seems to be about three different fiber types in here. And some of the benefits of the polar flash is that they come in a lot of different colors. And then the other ones are gonna be like your typical crystal flash. This is actually midge flash. And this stuff's really cool because, so this, this doesn't like necessarily dance around and move as much as like say the flashaboo. It's a little bit like stiffer, but the nice thing about it, it these come in like these really cool iridescent colors, a huge variety of colors. A lot of stores have like the full run of the, of the different colors. This midge one makes it a little thinner, but there's also just the regular crystal flash. It still has this like kind of crinkly, kind of scaly look to it. Another material that we're gonna use is marabou. And this I like because it's a, this is a natural material. It has like a lot of movement. It breathes a lot in the water. One of the drawbacks is that it can kind of, it can break pretty easy. And then last we have hackles, okay? Hackles come in, you know, a lot of different colors, but you're not going to get crazy with the colors. I like to use white, olive, gray. On this Hinkle Trout, I have some of those gray ones. Um, I have the Flashaboo, the Marabou, and then the last thing to top it off is the Bucktail. The lengths of all of these materials, we can determine that by using the shank as almost like a measuring stick for it. So. I'm gonna start off with this flashaboo. I'm gonna grab one of these longer strands. Since we're tying in like three times, I'm gonna to have to accommodate for that and go a little bit lighter each time. I have eight to 10 fibers here. I'm gonna to wanna to cut it all the way up from where it connects to the package. I'm always using my fingertips and kind of transferring it from hand to hand. I don't want all the material to just be the same length because then it'll, in the water, it'll all just kind of suck in like a paintbrush say this first tie-in that we're gonna do kind of is already staggered. The length that this wants to be is gonna be one and a half length of the hook shank. So I'm gonna pinch it up here and I'm gonna put that pinch up by the eye of the hook, right? And then I'm gonna see and make sure that these guys go right somewhere close to this bend, not too far out, not too close in. 
So right now, I'm happy right there. And then I'm going to take that, go to the middle of that hook shank, pinch that down, transfer it with the other finger, and then move this hand to pinch down up here by the eye. Take this from behind the thread, come up behind, and go up and around. With this other hand, I'm going to take and do one, one wrap just to kind of cinch it down a little bit. Now, wrap that that flashaboo, and I'm just going to wrap it almost all the way up to where those fibers are. Forward, one in front of the other, and then I'm going to go back again to where I started that tie-in. Try to go one on top of the other to make this thing real nice and nice and tight, so that thing that way nothing's slipping out while I'm fishing. Now, step number two is going to be the marabou. I want that marabou like breathing inside of the bait. Now, when we start dealing with a lot of these natural fibers, there's, there is some like preparation that you have to do, right? You don't just grab this and like start boom, tying on. The marabou is going to have, if you look down the center of that quill, there's always this top part right here, right? Where the the, the quill goes all the way up to here and it makes this little top section. I'm going to grab about a half inch or know, half inch of that. <laughs> grab a half inch of that and yank that off. I'm going to get two shanks out of this. One side of the quill, right? Here's that middle, that quill. One side is going to be one and then the other side will be another. So I just kind of pinch that down, move any other fibers out of the way. And now I have this nice amount for one shank. This guy, I'm going to tie him to be one length, one hook shank length. I'm just going to move forward maybe an eighth of an inch of that and clip. When tying in these kind of natural materials, if I were to just grab this and try to go, you know, try to just wrap it, see how it like, it moves a lot, it bends. If I just try to go, it'll, what'll happen here is I tighten down, it'll, it'll swivel on the hook shank. So I have to do a certain process to keep this nice and straight. The process is coming up and see how like my pinch of my fingers right here, I'm going to make a little loop. So I'm coming in on the, on the facing side of the marabou and that finger and go up and then bring it down on the opposite side of that marabou but I'm, see how like I'm keeping a loop inside of my fingertips. There's this little loop down there. And I don't tighten straight now. I want to come back around on the hook shank pointing up and I want to draw it down by pulling up right now. So that thing's, I feel it like going down my finger right now. The loop is pinching down once, twice. That that is now straight on the hook. It's secure. I'm going to wrap this forward, right? And my marabou is now exactly where I want it. It's here in this middle. It hasn't shifted over on the hook shank. All right, I'm going to come forward, maybe just like a eighth or 16 of an inch. Now that I have those three, I'm going to tie in my hackle. If you see here, you know, when you buy a, uh, a package of this stuff, there's a, there are like some very different kind of shapes to these hackles. I would say these three kind of have a, a similar like fullness and, uh, you know, the lengths, I can adjust those. That doesn't matter. People will take, um, they'll just tie it in like from here, right? And you end up with this mega long business out here. And again, you're going to run into fouling. You're going to run into problems. Right, so the, the real way to tie in a hackle and know where, how far you can get with the hackle is actually by taking the tip of it and then bending it downwards towards this, like where it inserts into the, into the body and where it stops, kind of see how here it bends nice and then it gets to this point where that quill is like thicker. That's as far as you can get with this hackle. I would say the length is just like one and a quarter shank length. I can line it up there, give it just a little bit more, and then 
again, the preparation, this natural stuff is all about how you prepare to put it on your hook. What I'm going to do here is grab this and I'm pinching kind of tightly with my right. And I'm, mm, see how that kind of separates, separates some of those hackle fibers from the quill. And actually now it's like pulling it off there a little. I only need like a 16th of an inch here. And that's what I'm going to cut. So as you see now, I have this, uh, I have this little bare exposed quill kind of thing that I shaved up. I'm going to check that dimension again. It seems a little long to me. It is. I'm going to take a little bit more off. All right. So I kind of ball it off the, off that quill. The hackles themselves have like a forward, like a, a forward side and an inside, right? Like when it lays on the chicken, one, one part of it is like exposed to the elements and the other part is kind of shaping to the body. Splayed is the way when you tie it in so it like, it kicks out like that, right? So instead of like turning in, where it'll always be like trying to suck into the, the hook, I wanna splay it where it's sticking out. This one I'm gonna put on just with my thumb. There's that quill. And this one, I just hold it real tight with my thumb and I, I don't apply too much pressure on the first wraps and then lock it down. Cover all the way to that quill and then go back to the initial tie-in. The last step for me is to take a bucktail. I'm going to take a little piece that kind of feels like maybe I would say slightly thinner than a toothpick. And then lengthwise, this one, I'm really just gonna make sure that it's not any longer than the hook shank. And even slightly shorter than that. Cause this guy, I don't want him coming out here. I want the marabou and the hackles to be pointing out more. Let's say three quarters of the hook shank. This one is gonna need to go on again with that, uh, the pinching loop method. Up into my finger on the front of it, coming down from behind and then pulling up towards me, all right? It's locked in, now I'm just gonna take one, two, three, wrap up to the, right, up to the front of that material, and then go back again to where I initially tied it in. So now this guy is hanging out on top, kind of protecting, and it also helps so that like, even though these are the right dimensions, we don't want them getting wild and like, you know, also wrapping around the hook, so this, it kind of, it's nice because it, it lays everything down here until it gets to that hook bend, which is where then I can, I want things dancing and moving around back there. So now let's move over to this alien device, the whip finishing tool. This is gonna make a knot on the end of this that's the proper knot that lays down right, that keeps, um, keeps materials and the thread secure. This is how this machine works. It has a hook to it. See, if I just let it go dangle, like gravity will throw this thing down. So the first thing I do, I twist it where this is pointing up. I put my index finger right there. This hook goes down on the line. I bring my line back into that notch of that part and then I make I bring it backward and I have a triangle where this is on top of the thread all right I have that triangle once I have that and I'm pointing my bobbin at the at the hook I release my index finger and see how that gravity took over and I do three wraps one two three towards the front then I lift up up enough and I feed a little with the bobbin, up enough so that, boom, it comes off of that notch. It's still on the hook. I'm now pulling with the bobbin and it's feeding that, it's feeding it down, pulling that hook downward and then I slip the hook off and that's the knot. Again, two, three. I'm gonna do three of these just to keep everything on there secure. Magic. This is now finished. So now I'm gonna take my scissors, cut that tag, and boom. I have a subtle feather that's functionally right. You know, that's the deal right there.
it's well it's protected by the bucktail it has the movement in the back this one has the flashaboo which is going to dance in the water and then my last step would be to take either head cement or just super glue and i'm going to put it on top of those threads to really secure this stuff so it's not you know it doesn't get frayed it doesn't get beat up you know and uh then i can once that dries i can then attach it to my baits and i then have front feathered hook on my glide baits. Bam! <laughs>